Okay, guys, in this video segment, we're going to take uh, the Bronsted Lowry theory uh, one step further and talk about how, if you look at both sides of the reaction, both the forward reaction and the reverse reaction, um, kind of what goes on in both directions. Okay, so we wrapped up last time with what is the theory, um, what are acids, hydrogen ion donors, bases, hydrogen ion acceptors, and so forth. The next step here is what happens if we reverse the reaction. So what happens if the NH4 plus and the OH minus go in reverse? How do they act? Well, let's take a look here and see. So if you have the NH4 plus, if it goes to the left, it becomes NH3. So it has four hydrogens. Now it only has three. So it becomes a hydrogen ion donor. Okay. So the NH4 plus, if it's a hydrogen ion donor, it's acting as an acid in the reverse direction. The OH minus, uh, it goes from 1H to 2 to go back to water, so it's acting as the hydrogen ion acceptor. So this would be considered the base in the reverse reaction. Okay, So to keep our terminology straight, in terms of forward reaction and reverse reaction, we use a term called conjugates. Okay, So the term conjugate acid-base pair is, if you take a look, every acid has a conjugate base that correlates to it. And every base has a conjugate acid that correlates to it. Okay? So if we look at this reaction and we say, okay, where's our acid here? So we have NaHCO3 and CH3COOH. So if we take a look, we have this CH3COOH ion. It has an H on the end of it. And then on this side, it does not have the H. So the H has gone away. So it has gone from having one extra hydrogen to not having it. So it donated a hydrogen. So here's our acid. Uh, the NaHCO3 had one H in it, and on this side it has two H's in it. So it is the acceptor. So this is our base over here. This is our acid. Now the conjugate in reverse is comes from the opposite direction of the reverse reaction. So if this is my acid, it's always going to have a conjugate base. Okay, So this is acetic acid, so we have my acetic acid and its conjugate base is going to be the sodium acetate ion in there. This is my base, sodium uh, hydrogen carbonate. The correlating acid is H2CO3, which is actually carbonic acid. Okay, So the term conjugate is basically the resulting base of the resulting acid that would be that way if it ran in reverse. Okay, um, So for example, uh, let's take a look at our definition here. Conjugate acid, acid form when a base gains a proton. Conjugate base, base form when an acid loses a proton. Okay, So the kind of neat thing about this is the stronger the original acid, the weaker its conjugate is going to be. So up here we have acetic acid, which is not that strong of an acid. It's kind of a weaker acid. Uh, <clears throat> So if you look over here, its conjugate base isn't going to be very powerful either. Okay? Uh, sodium hydrogen carbonate is a very weak base, so the carbonic acid would be a much stronger conjugate acid on there. Okay? Um, we can see a comparison in our next slide. So let's take a look here. If you have the hydrobromic acid, okay, this is increasing acid strength. So hydrobromic acid is considered one of our stronger acids out here. So that's going to be your acid. Its conjugate base, or the result of it losing um, a hydrogen ion, would be a bromide ion. So here's your increasing base strength going the opposite direction. So the bromide ions have very, very weak in terms of being a base. Uh, let's see. Nitric acid, another strong acid. Its conjugate base, the nitrate ion, very weak. However, you go down here and you see ammonium ions. Okay, ammonium ions are a pretty weak acid, but the ammonia molecule is actually a relatively strong base. Okay, go all the way down here, methanol again, a very weak acid, but the methoxy ion is a relatively strong base. Now there, you'll notice a couple of things that are interesting here. Water has a conjugate base to it. Okay. Um, but you also see water over here having a conjugate acid to it. So water is seen twice in this, in this list. So here you have the hydronium ion, and water ends up being the base. Here you have water as an acid, and it ends up being, it has, its conjugate is a base over here. So it looks like water can be both. Okay. Now if you take a look down here, here's your kind of explanation behind it. The hydronium ion water combination refers to the movement of between 
hydronium ions to water to water back to hydronium ions, okay? So what goes on here is that water actually has this ability to take on acidic-like properties or basic-like properties. It can do both, okay? And we have a special term for that. Um, let's try a couple here as an uh, example. So give yourself a minute here. I'm going to pause the video and then have you guys try these. What you're doing here is you're identifying the acid and then identifying the conjugate that comes with it. So, um, so for example, here we have H2SO4 and we have water. We have HSO4 one minus and then H3O plus. So the H2SO4, it is donating a proton becoming HSO4 minus. So since this is donating a proton, it's an acid. The water is H2O becoming H3O. So it's accepting a proton, so it is the base. Now, your job is to tell me which one of these is the conjugate acid, which one is the conjugate base, and then repeat that for all of these, okay? So take a minute, try these three out, and then we'll reconvene and kind of go through the answer key. Okay, so let's go back now and go through this answer key. If we take a look, we'll get to this idea of amphoteric in a minute. I apologize, that came up a little early. Uh, here's our results. So this was our acid. Here was our base. So the conjugate base is going to be the hydrogen with the sulfate ion because it results from this acid becoming this. So it's the conjugate base. The base, its conjugate acid, would be the H3O plus then. Uh, which means if you run this reaction in reverse, this is going to act as an acid. This is going to act as a base in reverse. Same idea down here. The, H3, the HSO4 one minus is our acid. Here's its conjugate base. Water again was the base. Here it is the conjugate acid. In this scenario, the, H, the NH3 is the base. It forms its conjugate acid, the NH4+. Plus. So water then becomes the acid, forming a conjugate base of OH-. Minus, okay? So if you look, water can really do one of two things. It can either be a result of the OH- minus and the H3O+. Plus, forming this, or it can be the, H, the HO2 forming H3O minus and, and OH minus. So because water can break down into a base and an acid, okay, so you see that water, in this case, is both the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. In this case, water acts as the acid and the base in these reactions. So water really can be either, um, or neither of them, actually. So we give that a special term. So when you have a substance that can act as a base and act as an acid, we call it being amphoteric. Um, there are several of those substances, substances out there. Um, ammonia is another one that can be amphoteric. But basically what you're looking for is something that has the ability to gain hydrogen and lose it. So for water, it can gain one and become H3O. But it also has some hydrogen here, so it can lose it. So the key to identifying amphoteric things are, are they able to gain hydrogen ions and lose them. So for example, if we look at the NH3, we could definitely gain one here and become NH4, but the NH3 could lose one of these three and become NH2. So NH3 or ammonia is also amphoteric, the ability to gain hydrogen and the ability to lose it. So what's cool about them is they really will do whatever they need to in comparison to what they're put with. So for example, like water here, it doesn't care if it wants to be an acid or a base, but because it was put with a base, it just takes on the form of being an acid. Up here, it was put with an acid, so it acts like a base. So it can do either one, which kind of makes them a more flexible molecule for us to work with. Now, we have one more theory I'm going to hit real quick uh, to wrap up this video. That's the Lewis theory. The Lewis theory is really kind of rooted in organic chemistry, and it talks more about electron, electrons moving around and not so much about the um, protons. We're not going to use it very much in our... Uh, um, unit here, but it is one that I just wanted to mention and put it into like your toolbox of different theories that are out there. So for Lewis acids, um, we're looking at anything that will accept electron pairs and forms covalent bonding. Bases are anything that will donate electron pairs, okay? So if you think about this, there's no mention of hydrogen at all in this which means we actually can apply acid and base properties and rules to things that don't even contain hydrogen if you're dealing with the Lewis theory. Uh, is by far our broadest definition, but again, it really only needs to be applied if you're looking at organic chemistry where you see some acidic properties coming off of things that don't have hydrogen. Um, and, for, and the same thing for bases. So 
That's your Lewis theory. Now, for us, everything we're going to do is, is going to be focused on Brian said Lowry. So we're going to use that theory. It matches up everything we need to for our introduction chemistry. Okay. Uh, our next segment is going to start into the self-ionization of water. Uh, I'm done for this one. Thank you.